Hello everyone, and I'm the writer, and we're back to the Great Ace Attorney. I don't remember this trial being so long, but I guess it's just long. Oh god, British accents. Ah, uh, Brick. Unfortunately, I have no idea where the poor man burnt his wrist like that. When the waiter brought my steak, the professor and I raised our glass in a toast. As far as I heard, the post-mortem report showed no other possible cause of death besides the gunshot. If there's some other way the man's life can be taken without leaving a trace, please do show me. But of course, this country's inferior investigation techniques probably wouldn't pick up on it anyway. Wow, you are really rude. Like, that's just it. You're a terrible person. Cool. The most captivating and beautiful testament will go down in Supreme Court history. Thank you. Easy does it. <laughs> I hope this is the last time I'll have to silly my lips with this coarse tones of your unbecoming tongue. You are really bad! Oh, forgive me. I do ever have insults to anyone. Just beat him. Not at all, not at all! It's a delight merely to hear you speak, dear lady. <coughs> Whoops! <laughs> Sorry, my glasses fell. Anyway. And it seems very clear from your testimony that this boorish talk of the victim's birth is utterly irrelevant. I will be speaking to your country's Minister of Justice about what has happened here today. Oh. The Minister of Justice? May that irritating little bully of a student be given the harshest of punishments possible. Amen. <laughs> huh? Um, thanks? Well, was that a prayer then? Well, you have to forgive the irritation, Miss Brett, and put up with the cross-examination for now. I expect you noticed that this little bully of a student has put, as you put it, doesn't miss much. Kazuma, I don't think he's doing well. Are you sure I don't need to remind you, counsel, that this will be your final cross-examination in the trial? If you fail to demonstrate any problems with this witness testimony, I will be ruling on the case immediately. Is that clear? I love this man. <laughs> he and I will be good friends if I ever met him. Yes, Your Excellency. And you may proceed with the cross examination. Okay. Oh, I love this theme. Inferior? What do you mean by that? In the lands of the Great British Empire, the police store everything found at the crime scene for the later examination. But in this country, you investigate once and that's the end of it. Isn't that so? Quite right! Like kind of us open for business as usual today, just after the incident. Exactly, which means that even if the investigation takes a different direction, vital <laughs> evidence may be lost. Oh right, we have to do this. No, I can't? Alright, fine. It doesn't even occur to you to, to oh my god. It doesn't even occur to your native detective to try and preserve the crime scene. I'm trying to be as tactful about this as I can, you understand. Ah ha! A killer blow! This lady's a formidable and she's beautiful! Amazing! He's actually admitting our policy may be flawed! Perhaps part of the prosecutor out is finally starting to see sense! Wow! I very much doubt that. <laughs> Still, there's something about what Miss Bryce just said. There was a moment there when something didn't seem quite right. What do you think, Ryanosuke? I, I think it's going terribly! No matter how much I press her, I'm not turning up any new information! Yes, as I suspected, she's a tough witness. We need to find a way to break her testimony, or the cross-examination will be over. But, but that would mean I have to find a way. There must be some clue to help us find this kind of kink in her armor. Kazuma? What, Ryunosuke? There is one thing I noticed, something that's been bothering me. Bothering you? You mean, about Miss Brett? Actually, no. About the person standing next to her, Inspector Honosaga. The detective? 
Yes, he seemed to react a little strangely to Miss Brett's last statement. I was wondering if, I might, if it might be significant. It might present an opening, maybe. Alright, I have an idea. Try pressing her on that last statement one more time. If you think so, but... But this time, instead of targeting the woman herself... Let's see what we can get out of the detective. Alright then, I wonder what caused him us thinking. I'll find out soon enough, I suppose. Once I press Miss Brenner on her last statement again... This music is godly. I don't listen- I listen to a lot of video game soundtracks, but this one's just beautiful. Yes. Okay, I'm not re-saying- I'm not saying this all again. Kiss up. Wait. There we go! Nice. Yes! There it is again! The detective's reaction is just the same as before! Why? Up until now, the detective has been in the stand with Miss Brett as her interpreter. But things are very different now. For this testimony, the detective is just listening to what the Englishwoman is to say. This could be a golden opportunity. What do you mean? When people are actually testifying, they're usually very careful not to let anything slip up. However, when they're listening to someone else speak, you'll find they often let their guard down. Right! Look at him! He's lost in his own thoughts! It's time to pursue that man and his train of thought! Sorry? Pursue? I'll explain how to do it, Minusku. It all has to do with the witness maker. Marker. What marker? At the moment, we're focusing on Miss Brett, who's the person actually making the current statement. Oh, it's tutorial. Put him over the marker. Yeah, okay, tutorial. Yes. Did you ever notice a strange atmosphere amongst the people on the stand? Take a good look around. Alright then, so first I should- okay. Yes! Here we go, buddy. Wait. Excuse me. There we go. Yeah. What the? What is the meaning of this? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to shock you. He really was lost in his thoughts. Deeply. It looked like you were thinking something just now, Inspector. Perhaps having heard what the lady next to you had to say? If there's something you'd like to say, please, share it with the court. Objection! What is the meaning of this? It's the delightful Englishwoman who's testifying at the moment. If you can't find fault with her testimony, then cross-examination should be over immediately. Oh, is, is that how it works? Absolutely not. <laughs> hmm? The detective is in the stand, which makes him a va valid witness. Oh, buddy. Yes! Not to mention the fact that he's intimately involved in the case! Inspector Hosonaga. Yes? Do you have something to add in relation to the statement just made by Miss Brett? Well, yes. If you don't mind, I would like to speak. Uh-oh. That's not a good thing for you, is it, lady? The lady is right. Our country's po police practices are not as modern as those used in Great Britain. Which is why I, Satori Hosonaga, always strive to make every investigation I'm involved in flawless. What do you really mean by that? I'll tell you what I mean. I won't have evidence lacking under my watch. I'm not afraid to take anything I can from the scene of the crime. It's preserving evidence, you see. I don't care if they call me a crime scene thief. I'm not ashamed of what I've done. <laughs> a crime scene thief? Well, it looks like the lady's remarks touched a nerve there. Take this, for example. You took the bottle?! Is that? 
This is the bottle of carbonated water that I took to the victim's table on the day in question. And yes, it's lost all of its fizz, having been opened there days ago. But it was carbonated water. I don't care what anyone says. Yes, there's something left in the bottle! I can see it! One day our police force will be among the best in the world. The time is coming, I guarantee it. <laughs> I hope you live long to get there, pal. Oh, I can't say I condone the witness's actions, but I can understand the sentiment. The court will accept the glass bottle of water as evidence. I have to examine that, too. Hmm, Miss Brett. Can you confirm this is indeed the bottle from which you drank on the day of the victim's death? Yes. It was that bottle. What was that about? She seemed to avert her eyes when she answered the judge's question. Very well, counsel. You may resume the cross-examination. And the inspector will kindly control his... Favor... Favor... Ahem. Yeah. I know what statement it's on. I'm just gonna get to it preemptively. But I do know... We have to look at the bottle. Labels written in foreign language that I don't recognize. Do you know what it says, Cosimo? I think it's French. This must be a very expensive water. Yes, but what does it say? That's what I'm asking. Then go to France and ask. Oh my god, man! You could just say that you don't know. Um, uh, do I have to go to the top? I don't know. So this is carbonated water with the last drink Dr. Wilson ever had. It looks there's a little left in the bottle, although it's just plain water now. You know, I've been sweating so much. I'm absolutely parched. I'll just have a sip of this to keep me going. No, Ryanusku, you can't do that. For one thing, that's evidence. You can't go drinking evidence. Oh no, you're right. We don't know what might be inside, do we? You never cease to amaze me, Ryanusku, in more ways than one. I wonder, <laughs> could there be anything in the water? What's the matter? You've gone quiet all of a sudden. I think I might have just worked out something. Any in an interesting possibility. Huh? I think, wasn't there more? No, that's the bottle. It's the last you ever had. This is just us talking about the French. Okay. Yes! What's this? The bottle of water? Actually, there's one method of killing a man without leaving a trace that comes to mind. Obviously, I'm referring... To poison! Why did you- Okay. Poison? On the day of his death, we know that Dr. Wilson drank from this bottle of carbonated water. Could it be that there was poison inside? Could it be that, there, that the professor actually died after taking a sip from this glass? Oh boy. Order, order, order! Oh, here we go. Now on that day, who was sitting at the same table as the, professor, as the professor and able to slip the poison into his drink? There was only one person who could have possibly done it! Gisela Brett! It was you! This is outrageous! It's just as a thing without a scrape of evidence! You little rookie imbecile, have you considered the delicate situation our country finds itself now? Have you forgotten that we have only just signed a cord of friendship with the British Empire? Have you forgotten the vaguest England that your rash accusations could jeopardize the entire treaty? Objection. This is not a, polit a political arena. This is a trial to determine one individual's guilt with respect to one's crime. What? This, the fact that this woman is British makes no difference. We're all here to determine the truth. Uh. Ahem, if I may. I will sign you for over this disgraceful attack on the- <laughs> It is you who should be silent. Oh, of course! Dear lady! Where did that come from? 
come from? She she just snapped. I'm afraid I may have spoken unfairly before. I offer my most humblest apologies. I'm sorry, my lady. To what are you referring? I described your police force as inferior. But no matter how inferior they may be, you will investigate this particular point thoroughly, I believe. The bottle, I mean, Inspector. And whether it contained poison or not? Of course. You- you did?! Have you forgotten what my guiding principle is already? I strive for a flawless investigation every time. I don't believe it! Naturally, we tested the inside of the bottle and its contents. And? And what did you find, Inspector? I ordered tests for every toxin that's available in this country at the present time. You can find no trace of poison of any description in the bottle of carbonated water, Your Excellency. What? Oh, whoops. What? Are you sure? The tests were mer meticulously carried out by the chief courier himself. No! No! Not today! Not now! I'm very grateful to all you Japanese. You've successfully established my complete innocence in this court affair. Thank you. Oh, but, but of course, dear lady, the pleasure was all ours. I was so sure. This can't be right. Everything falls into place if he was poisoned. Thank you, counsel. I think the cross-examination has clarified everything. As the prosecution has asserted, a shot to the chest from the gun was the only conceivable cause of death. Furthermore... The accused who, by his own admission, was holding the weapon is the only one possible culprit. I'm done for! The, count, the court wishes to apologize for the great inconvenience this has caused you, Miss Brett. Oh no, I'm just glad the matter is resolved. Before proceeding, I must ask the counsel for def of the defense. Do you have any further new evidence to present at the court at this point? Kazuma? Sorry, Ryunisuke. I have nothing more. Well, if you'll excuse me now, I really must be leaving. I, I'm just curious about one thing. This is just purely for my... How old is this lady? Wow, okay. Oh, boy. <gasps> Yay! Best girl! Best legal assistant! Oh, I love her. Please, wait. Oh, isn't that... What is the meaning of this? Forgive me for intruding on the court proceedings, Your Excellency. Susato Mikotoba, judicial assistance to the defense. Mikotoba? In my darkest hour, with nowhere left to go, she appeared like a bolt of lightning. And in her hand, she carried a small package, wrapped in a furoshiki cloth. Oh man, best legal assistant here! Let's go! <laughs> oh, this music's so good too. This is beautiful. I'm hoping we're gonna get the first trial done. That way when I eventually pick this up again, we'll go straight to the second case. Well, I understand you are the judicial assistant to the defense, but why the sudden ingression into my courtroom? Ah, a judicial assistant, and a woman no less. Well, I'm gonna really punch you. <laughs> the rules state that females are not permitted into this court of law other than to testify. Yes, I fully understand. I only ask for five minutes of time. I have some vital evidence that I must hand over to the defense. You're too late, little girl. The trials are even concluded. Five minutes. I will not allow a moment more. But, you're an excellency. I am most grateful. Um, who exactly are you? I'm sorry, there's no time. Please, simply accept this for now. What is it? A report about something, written in English. It's Gisela Barrett's research. Oh, the Englishwoman's? After the trial resumed earlier, I hurried back to the university. 
I went to Dr. Wilson's laboratory in the medical facility and borrowed this paper. Oh yes, that's right. Miss Brett was studying under the professor, wasn't she? So, does this research, whatever it is, have something to do with this case? I'm afraid I don't know. I haven't been able to list the pers listen to the proceedings of the trial myself. Oh, no, of course not. Special characteristics of Curia and its effects on human subjects. Interesting. Curia? What's that? I've never heard of that word before. The time's up! The prosecution demands the immediate removal of this female trespasser from the courtroom. There was too little time for me to read it in detail, but I've summarized what I could on a note just inside the cover. If you think it could be valuable, please cast your eyes over it. This is wonderful! Thank you! Goodbye, friend. And good luck. No! I love you! Come back! <laughs> Oh, no. You have long enough, Council. We cannot detain our English guest any longer. I ask the prosecution and defense now one last time. Does either side have any further evidence to present to the court? I presume not, but... The prosecution has made its case convincingly enough already. Nothing more to add, Your Excellency. Rina Scoop, we're out of options here. This really is our very last chance. Yes, I know. Your Excellency, the defense does have new evidence! Hmm, that look. The unyielding stare of a true Japanese warrior. Well, Miss Brett? Yes, Your Excellency? If you wouldn't mind, perhaps you could grace us with your presence a little longer. It's a delightful invitation, but I'm afraid. It's not so very long till tea time. I have to politely decline. Forgive me, Miss Brett. It seems I wasn't clear. I realized it was phrased as a question. However, I must ask you to treat that as an order. I said it as many times as I have before, but the Japanese language makes no sense. My apologies, dear lady. So, counsel. What is this new evidence that demands the court's attention? Miss Gisela Brett, we understand you were studying under Dr. Wilson at the Yuma University doing research. Research, by sheer coincidence perhaps, into a deadly poison. What? Poison? Where are you going with this, Council? A toxin known as cur curaria, Your Excellency. Even the slightest amount of this deadly poison entering the body leads to an instant death. What? What complete and utter nonsense! Curaria, you say? I've never heard of it! You wouldn't have... You wouldn't have done. What do you mean? I mean that you wouldn't have heard of Curaria before for one very simple reason. It doesn't exist in our country. It doesn't exist? Correct. Which means, no matter what tests the police can do for toxins, they never an identify Curaria. Why? Because there is no test available that can identify the presence of this highly deadly poison! What? Order, order, order! Council, does this deadly poison truly exist? According to this report authored by the visiting research student from England, Curaria has long been used by the tribes people of South America as a poison to lace their arrows. It seems that it's reasonable well known among European doctors and scientists. To, to delace the arrows? The report states it's a procedure from the extract of a tree that grows deep in the Amazonian jungle, and it was first brought back to Europe as the turn of the century of, of the of the century by explorers. It claims that animals shot by arrows laced with curia suffer instant death. Doesn't that about sum it up, Miss Brett? Aspirations are utter trumpy. To start with, if the victim had administered this, some of this so-called deadly poison, he would have squirmed and writhed in pain, and all the other diners would have noticed, surely. Hmm, that's true. What do you say to that, Inspector? Obviously, I would have noticed a disturbance like that. Hmm, I don't remember anything like that either. 
I didn't notice the professor being in any kind of pain. According to this, however, it's the other way around. What do you mean, the other way around? The very fact that the victim didn't show any visible signs of stress is evidence that the cure aria was used. Explain yourself, counsel. The moment of this toxin enters a person's system, it causes instant paralysis. In other words, afflict afflicted victims lose all strength and are, unable, are not completely unable to move. Even if they were in total agony, there would be no visible signs of pain at all. How terrible! Obviously, if a man lost all of his strength in his muscles, he'd collapse on the floor. But with a chair under him for support, as Dr. Wilson did, the effects could go largely unnoticed. But I don't follow, Kazuma. That's just paralysis. I thought the poison caused instant death. The full explanation is extremely unpleasant. The poison causes immediate paralysis, as I said, leaving the victim unable to move. But after a short time, the paralysis is so severe, it causes the muscles that could control respiration respirations to fail. Respirations? In other words, the actual cause of death is suffocation. And all the while, the victim is conscious and aware, just unable to move. That's hideous. To the observer, it would look as almost like the victim was slipping peacefully into an endless sleep. But, but before not nah, but for the victim himself, his final moments would be living hell. That is, the true nature of this deadly curaria poison. Oh boy! Well, that's traumatic. And you're suggesting that this bottle, Council, actually contains this terrifying poison? <laughs> this, this, this is all very convenient, isn't it? A hitherto unknown poison for which there is no means of testing? What a happy tale for the defense! Ahem, if I may. All these facts, if you think, are so clever, but you must be taught some manner. It is you who must be taught. Oh, of course. The lady. So, this is how you Japanese behave, is it? Well, what? You steal another honest hard work and then announce the results as if you discovered them? It's appalled. What a loathsome act. Well, Miss Brett, the feeling is mutual. Whatever do you mean? Capitalizing on the unfortunate circumstances of an innocent man to frame him for a heinous crime? That really is a loathsome act. Wouldn't you agree? Enough of this! I, for one, refuse to accept it. The idea of some poison that doesn't even exist in the great empire of Japan is, is breaking the rules. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, excuse me, your excellency? Y yes Miss Brett? May I borrow that bottle for a moment, please? Mm, yes, well, uh, yes, I don't see why. Um, why not? Uh, there was still water in there? Well, I know they said it wasn't sparkling, but don't look at it. Don't get too big for your boots, you insignificant little island boys. Well, I hate you. Sorry? To an English woman such as myself, this whole affair is partial comedy. Your little police games and these foolish courtroom antics. It's laughable, really. But I'm getting bored of it all now. It's time for the game to end. Cheers. <laughs> oh god. Wait! Wh what are you doing? Oh man. Hmm. No sparkle left at all. How appropriate for this shabby affair. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I'd be mortified too. This whole ordeal is really bad. Goodness. Goodness. Whatever is the matter? You all look quite stunned. So, no curaria. The bottle was clean, is that what you're saying? <laughs> you look quite impidious, little boy, but of course. That's the simple truth. 
Thank you for presenting the findings of my research so concisely here in this grand venue. Most kind. <sighs> Thank you, waiter. Now then, Your Excellency. <laughs> ah, um, yes, Miss Brett? I should like to be excused now, please. I think I've given more than enough of my time for this furtherance of friendship between our countries. Uh, yes, dear lady. We are most grateful. We are most gratified with all of the assistance you've given. <laughs> oh, buddy, no! Come on! This doesn't make a sense! There had to be some poison in that bottle! So how? How did she... How did she swallow a whole glass and live to tell the tale? I don't understand it! Well, I suppose if nothing else, this little Far Eastern charade... will make for interesting conversations at my next party I attend in London. There, there has to have been poison in that bottle. Doesn't there? But there can't be heaven, because otherwise she would have killed over dead. Come on, Rianu Scoop, we have all the clues now. That bottle of water. Oh, whoops! <laughs> oh, well, I think that was the right choice. The culprit did put QR poison into Dr. Wilson's carbonated water. I... The defense refuses to change its position. You're serious? Ooh, are you blind? There is no possible way that bottle could contain poison. I mean, we just saw Miss Brett drinking the water from it. That's right. Which rather complicates your argument, I think. And I believe the complications can be explained. How exactly? I need to think through all the things I don't quite add up here, one by one. I'm sure the answers in the evidence we have in the court record somewhere. It has to be. Very well, if the defense truly intends to assert its claim. Then I must ask to support this assertion with evidence. What explains how the waiter witness was able to consume the supposed liquid poison water after be without being unscathed? Yes. Oh, whoops. I need to stop hitting the X button. The answer to this riddle is right here in Miss Britt's own research report. That's not a valid explanation. No? After all... We don't speak English. The report is a gibberish. This impudent young scoundrel trying to ridicule the court, Your Honor. Your Excellency. I'm trying to ridicule anyone, honest. I'm just reading Susato san's notes. I concur. This report is sensitive to be considered entirely court. You will direct us to the permit section, Council. Which section of the report reveals the alleged answer to the riddle? We've been hearing a lot about this QR poison. And it's left me curious about something. Oh, counsel? Well, it sounds as though the indigenous hunters have been using this poison for years and years. To lace the heads of their arrows and they shoot whatever the prey they're hunting. So we've been led to believe, yes. And... The point of hunting is to catch prey to eat. Get to the point, please! But if they were to use these laced arrows... Doesn't that mean there would have been traces of poison left in the prey the hunters were going to eat? Yes, good point! So surely the hunters wouldn't want to eat their prey, would they? Because then they'd be eating poison. Good gracious, Council, no, that would be madness! But I actually found the answer to that conundrum. In this research paper here, under the special characteristics, it says this. The poison starts to work after entering the body through a wound. To a wound, you say? I see, that makes sense. Yes, the mention of that particular detail seems to be a little strange to me, though. But it all makes sense when you interpret what's written like this. When Kirara enters the body through an open wound, it has a terrifying poisonous effect. However, when it enters the body via the mouth, it has no poisonous effect whatsoever. What? Miss Brett, you're, uh, you authored this research. You knew your special characteristics. You knew that you couldn't make a spectacle of drinking that water without any danger to yourself. You meddling little... Rapscallion! Well, we an excuse, it turns out. You're even a better lawyer than I thought you'd be. Really? Me? A lawyer? 
Oh, all of this poison talk is fascinating, I'm sure, but I fail to see how possible. So, this ill-bred little puppy has a new toy to play with? Some facts he read in a book? But I'm afraid knowledge doesn't suit you, little boy. It only makes you look silly. What are you trying to say? You schoolboyish logic has a fate of flaw. Schoolboyish? Flaw? <laughs> As even your brain has managed to deduce, Kirara is safe to ingest. It seems likely that its effects are neutralized by the acidic nature of this gastric and success. Oh, yes! Well, of course! Gastric suckers? What are they? <laughs> so, if the lethal poison is completely harmless when drunk, the professor would have died when he swallowed it, would he? Ah! That's right! Good gracious! That's basic science. Science that even schoolboys should be able to understand, no? Order, order in the court, order! The logic holds, if the lady and the professor drank the same poison, they would be affected the same way. Our... Are you trying to suggest? Yes, this cure boys is completely irrelevant to the case and trial. That's right. Surely even little cockroaches like you could understand something as simple as that. What is this? Blowing up inside me. I've never felt like this before. It's sort of conviction to break down all the discrepancies. It's so intense, almost rage-like, and more than anything else, it's an animalistic desire to take down my prey. Objection. Heck yeah! I don't think so, Miss Gisela Brett. How? How dare you use that tone with me? You know very well there's no fatal flaw here. You know exactly why, even though both you and the victim swallowed the same poison. You're alive, but Dr. Wilson is dead! <sighs> Counsel, I'm sure I don't need to remind you, you must provide compelling evidence. As we now know that the poison is completely harmless when ingested, why would Dr. Wilson have alone been killed by the Curaria? Uh, oh god. No. Wait, yeah, this one. As Miss Brett so readily pointed out, she drank the same water as the professor. However, there was a fundamental and fatal difference between the two diners. A fatal difference? <sighs> the toxin effects of cure are only felt when the poison enters the body through an open wound. So, for a healthy person to have no injuries, drinking it is completely harmless. But... There was a wound inside the mouth of the person drinking the poisoned water. Inside? Yes, like the wound you might have if you had just been dead to the dentist. And had a tooth extracted, for example. Ah! Oh. Miss Brett, you have acknowledged many times in your testimony already that you were well aware of Dr. Wilson's dental appointment that day. Ah. So that's it. You use that knowledge to orchestrate this. <laughs> is, is she... Laughing? I don't like to repeat myself, but honestly, I can't resist. These childish courtroom games and your half-baked arguments are all so futile. What? What do you mean? You don't worry, little schoolboy. You'll find out soon enough. Huh? You see, when you leave vital evidence lying around, you never know what might happen to it. No! I mean, it could just slip. Oh dear, how careless of me. I'm afraid some crucial evidence may have just been tragically destroyed. No! no! What is it? What just happened? It's the English woman. She just smashed that bottle. And then the Supreme Court. What a terrible blunder. 
Officer, what are you waiting for? Collect up as much of the water from that Vulcan bottle as possible at once. You're wasting your time. It's delightful carpet under my feet. It was a gift from the British Empire. I assure you, it will soak up the water beautifully. You have neither the technology nor the presence of mind to recover it. <laughs> How could you? You, you won't get away with this. You can thump that bench and shout as much as you like, little boy. But I'm afraid we'll never know now, will we? If there really was any poison in that bottle or not. You! And let us not forget, we still have some very compelling evidence left intact. Isn't that right, counsel for the prosecution? Oh, of course, of course! You're referring to this photographic print, I presume, my dear lady? That's right. And really, looking at this photograph, it's as clear as day, isn't it? The poor professor was sitting on his back to me. So of course the only person who could have shot him in the front is the little schoolboy. No, you killed the victim that day, using Curaria! And then, in order to frame Ryonusuke now to Hondo for the crime... You wait until he picked up the pistol you arranged for him to find on the floor before you shot the professor's dead body in the chest with your own hand and gun. Then, in the confusion that followed, you had all to do was to turn the dead professor and his chair around. You see, you had every opportunity to commit this crime. <laughs> what a wonderful imagination you have, young man. Uh. A hidden gun, you say? And I shot the professor's dead body, did I? Well, I'm terribly sorry, but you don't have a shred of evidence. Exactly! And as you have nothing to support your wild claims, the prosecution stance remains unchanged. The victim, Dr. John H. Wilson, was killed with a gunshot to the chest. Delivered in cold blood by the accused Rianus Gunnaro Hondo. Uh. Hmm. This is unbelievable! How could this be happening? We had her, but now... Is she really gonna get away with it? The way she destroyed that evidence was obscene! Rianusku! Yes? We've come this far, but now, you now you're the only one who can finish it. What? What do you mean? We've lost a few vital piece of evidence, it's true. So is there any clues left for us to use now? There must be in your head. In my head? You told me before that your powers of observation were the one thing you could really depend, really depend on. Well, yes, that's true, but... I didn't manage to notice that this one was a foreigner with a swan on her head. So think back again now. Try to remember every last detail about the scene that day. Everything you saw, everything you felt, every color, every smell. Uh, what I saw, what I felt, every color. Oh, buddy. Is Kazuma right? Somewhere in the vibrant memory of the same scene in my head. Could there be another clue to expose the identity of Dr. Wilson's killer? Actually, Kazuma, I think I might have something. Thinking back over everything I saw, I think I might have uncovered another clue. Haha, <laughs> you always have something up your sleeve, don't you, Ryanusuke? Ken, come on then. Let's wipe that smug smile off that Englishman's face with the same evidence. All right, I can't wait. It's been nag niggling me for a while that something feels amiss in my memories of that day. Whatever it could be, it's the key to arriving at the truth all about all this. It's here somewhere. The clue that shows Dr. Wilson's real killer must have been... Inspector Hosonaga, answer me this! Y yes what is it? Ugh, he's still miles away, probably thinking about that bottle being smashed. As you've said a number of times now, you strive for perfection in your investigations, don't you? Absolutely. I wonder, therefore, if perhaps you took anything else from the scene of the crime. Like, for instance, the plate of the steak you took to the victim's table that day. Wait a minute, where are you going with- where are you going with this, little boy? It's just a memory that's been troubling me. What memory? 
I saw the stain shown in this photographic print with my own eyes that day. And I saw that on the wooden base of the plate that the steak was served on. It was splattered with, with... Was a splattering of blood. What? You're really and what of it? Obviously that must have happened when you shot the professor. No, that can't be the case. Huh? Take a good look at the photograph in the relative position of everything there. The plate of the stake is almost directly behind the victim. If I'm supposed to have shot Dr. Wilson in the chest from the front, then there's no way that blood from the victim could have ended up directly behind him. Ah! Hmm, yes. For blood to have made it into the plate it implies that the plate was between the victim and the shooter, which means that the shooter must have been sitting opposite the professor, as you were. Gisela Brett! I beg your pardon! <laughs> this, this is beyond ridiculous! Fabricated nonsense! Is this court seriously expected to believe something accused has apparently just remembered seeing it? This... This could be the moment that my entire career in the police force has been leading to. Inspector, you mean... Yes, I took the plates, in the interest of preserving evidence from the scene of the crime. I took it, meat and all, and I don't care if they call me a currency thief because of it. You did what?! I took the steak that you had been eating, Miss Brett. I took the steak that the sergeant had been eating. I did it all in the name of justice. Then we can find out for sure whether or not there's a bloodstain on Miss Brett's plate. We must examine it now. Inspector, the court wishes to examine the plate of the victim's table immediately. Yes, sir. Man, this case goes on longer than you think. Oh, here's the beefsteak. Sorry for the delay. Here's what you ordered. The steak. Well, what about the blood? Is there any blood on it? Of course there isn't! Quickly, Inspector, the blood, man! Show up the court! Of course. Examine the plate at your own leisure. Well, no, no blood, no blood anywhere. But, but no, that's impossible! I know I saw it, I'm sure of it! It was right there on the table behind the professor. There was blood on the side of the plate. <laughs> it was an unbecoming expression, little boy. You see, this is why I always say you can't trust what the Japanese tell you. Why did you bother to come here then? Ah, tsk, I couldn't agree more in the case of this disgrace to the Empire. I believe we may finally have reached a conclusion in this trial. Let's hope so. This let's pretend attempt at court from proceedings is painful to watch. But I do promise to do my best to make it all about this when it's over. Oh, buddy! <laughs> This sorry looking steak reveals the facts all too clearly. It's if the sorry looking accused wishes to examine again, be my guest. Oh, you're too kind, you son of a. Was the bit I saw or thought I saw just a figment of my imagination? This is it now, I lost. We got a new school. It's not over yet. Not until the final gavel. Never stop believing in yourself. Keep looking forward, no matter what. Believe in myself? Really? Hmm, maybe I should at least examine the evidence for myself. As the evidence requested by the defense has not shown any problematic in any way, I presume that any further examination of the evidence in this trial will be very unnecessary. Does the defense have any objections? Let's look at it now. Okay. Huh? What the? What in the world is this? I think it's a Koban coin. And the homework from the Hoa era, I believe. No, 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 no! I didn't mean what it is! I mean, what's it doing there? Wait, did you just say it was a Hoa Koban? Yes, 
And apart from the man, it looks to be in good condition. I imagine it's very valuable. Hmm, this isn't the first today, time today I've, there's been a talk about Koi Kaban. I've heard the pearls before spines, but I've never heard of bullion before bullion. <laughs> I don't think I ever will again. This is extraordinary, though. This means... I don't know. That bloodstain was going to clinch the whole trial for me. Can this plate just, just can this plate of steak reveal any other clues at all? Your Excellency, please wait! The plate of beef is hiding another clue. Another clue that will reveal the shocking truth. <laughs> the only thing that's shocking here is your unhealthy fascination with beef steak. Your Excellency, I think I've made myself clear, haven't I? I will not be able to return to a blind eye anymore to your unnecessary procrastinations at this trial. Well, you don't have the right group, does she? Sorry, Miss Brug, but we must thorough examination of all the evidence. I will not be ruling completely until I'm completely satisfied with all reasonable doubt that has been dispelled. I see, as a newly found ally of my country, but that's still your position, is it? Thank you, Your Excellency! Counsel for the defense, you will now clearly show the court what you were alluding to. Where precisely on the plate of beefsteak is this new clue to be found? Well, I have to move it, don't I? Okay. Oh, I live this. Uh, I always get forget when and where to do this. But, uh... Got it. Good, good gracious, that's... What on earth? A uh, horror air one did that. Miss Brett. This is in fact the beef steak that you ordered at the restaurant on the day in question, is it? Tell me. Why is there an old coin seemingly hidden underneath the meat? <laughs> what ridiculous question! Why, how should I know? I've never seen that thing in my life! I don't even know what it is! I want no part of it! Oh, excuse me. I fail to see how this is relevant. A coin under the meat? That could simply have been careless mistake by the chief, uh, the, the chef in the moment of destruction. Highly doubt a chef would make that distress. Don't be absurd. We're supposed to believe this happened by accident in the kitchen? Where are I provide? Just happens to be hidden underneath a piece of steak? If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case, I'll rip up my ticket to Great Britain right now. He's right. I can't. It can't be a coincidence. Your Excellency. Yes, Counsel. A rare hole I could find just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak. If this turns out to be relevant to the case, I'll give up my lawyer job right now. I'll give it up. You never had one. By all means, don't let us stop you. No one invited you anyway. This is going on here. Perhaps as a boy, you should realize that this is you who's irrelevant. Even though I'm the one on trial here! The point is, it's essential that we ask the owner of this coin if he can explain what to do with under the stake. The owner? Yes, it's obvious. There's only one person it can belong to. The owner of the combined coin was found underneath the beef stake is... Take that! Wait. Oh, whoops. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Obviously, it can only be the antique stealer and the owner of the Ratsute Kuru Kore Kuta san. Kore, as in Mr. Cucumber something? Honestly, these ridiculous Japanese names are quite unfathomable. No, you're just being rude. Ah, uh, yes. The old man just spun earlier with also the military sergeant, correct? Yes, Your Excellency. I remember him saying that he was up to something with his Koban coin when it happened. Exactly the moment the gun was fired. The gunshot interested me not. I was far too busy on the floor. Too busy on the floor? Sorry, what were you doing? Hunting for the treasure. Indeed, the Hore Eric Oban, my prized coin. This, then this Hore Eric Oban, do, do you mean to tell me? Oh, please, why would a Kotara Khan sans Kuban be sandwiched between the victim's beefsteak and its plate? It makes no sense. Yes. 
Which is why I'm asking to bring Kotokoro-san back to the witness stand so we can ask him. For officer, bring both the witnesses that testified earlier back in here. Without a moment's delay. <laughs> this little trial got out of whack. I can't believe we've come back around to that pair again. But I have a hunch, a strong hunch, that if we chase down the real significance of this Koban, we'll be able to find its key element in the case. Well, four people on the witness stand. Okay, five. I forgot about the baby. What's all this about? Why I've been called up again? Do you not realize it's dinner time for little baby Ido? When my son's belly empty, he's fiercer than a pack of wolves. Exploited by the leaves we were, like miserable dogs forced to bear false witnesses. And when I cast from this courtroom myself, I become a ruined man in trice, a worthless, withered, antique. Nothing more may I have to say, the sun sets on the roast to his shop owner's existence. Be that as a main court to son, something has come to light that requires your clarification. As far as the rats are, your memory serves, have you ever seen this coba- ah! Yes, that's it! The one, the very one, the very exact one that it is! The resplendent, spandorious high treasure that my rusted bones managed to misplace that fateful day! It can't be! Hmm, as I thought. Young man! Eat a drink, sorry. And like this decrepit old fool, put me out of my misery! Where, where was my treasure? Where was it dropped? Oh, um, I'm not sure if it was dropped anywhere? We found your coin sandwiched between a beefsteak and its plate, soaking in the seasoned meat juices. S -s sandwiched S -s soaking S -s seriously Clearly, it couldn't have fallen there by accident. Which means... Somebody must have hidden it there on purpose. Somebody concealed my hoi treasure between a slab of meat and a meat plate? Who would do such a thing? Such unconsensible thing! Excuse me, could I say something? Yes, of course. Proceed, Inspector Honos Hosonaga. I mentioned this earlier in the trial, but I was working undercover in the restaurant in order to investigate another case. Ah, yes, that's right. The secret undercover operation. Conoval is a high-class Western cuisine restaurant. It attracts wealthy donors, including many foreigners. Recently, there's been a run of similarly executed thefts targeting the restaurant's rich climate. A number of such incidents have been reported to the police bureau. Hmm, wicked crimes indeed. We wanted to nip the case in the bud quickly, especially with so many foreigners being afflicted, affected. So that's why you were sent undercover, is it? Yes, I took on the job of a waiter as the restaurant order to flush out the criminal. It seems likely that this Koban incident is the work of the same thief. Hmm, so unbeknownst to us, there was a master thief at the work of the restaurant on a regular basis. The place was already the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part, but... The identity of the person who stole and hid the Kotan son's Koban is all too clear. What? What? I think the court would like to hear the defense's view on the matter. Tell us, who is the despicable scoundrel that stole Kotoko-san's Kauban and hid it under the stake? Take that! Obviously, it can only be you! Sergeant Isanosa. Wh how How dare you, 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 you monster! Monster? I stole that Koban, did I? I am the master thief of La Carnival, am I? You seriously accusing me of these crimes, cadets? But it wasn't me, it was Ido! Ido is the mastermind behind all of this! That's terrible. You would punish, push the blame on your own crimes on your own son? An innocent little baby? It's you who's the monster, Sergeant Nosa! Uh. Oh. Whoa! Clippity, 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 clippity. Oh, his back's gone. Whoa. 
Nippon Imperial Army Sergeant Issa Nosa preparing to stand down in the Supreme Court. Sir! What the f- Okay. Do any of you know of the extraneous low wages the Nippon Imperial Army pays those it expects to keep our country safe? We understand that the temper increase in taxation owing to our recent end and in conflicts remains in place. And I have heard that it's hard for low and ranking officers to make a living, yes. All I want is to put pot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant. The place is heaving with money. Every three days I go there to do some reconnaissance for a target. And I enjoy chopping my way through a good steak at the time. Sounds like he doesn't bother with a knife and a fork even, which is worryingly believable. And your target that day was the old man is Koban. Yes, sir. He was an easy mark. I, I slipped a coin into my pocket without any trouble at all. Eh? A veritable phantom thief you are? I was all set to st leave the stake. I halfway, uh, I was halfway through devouring when it happened. Yes, when the professor was shot. I knew that if the police conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. I know too, so I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could. On the double, I slipped it under the stake. Hoping that I'd be able to run of it, run of it with it again at a later date. Okay, <laughs> we're all stunned to silence, I see. This is ridiculous. Perhaps you could carry on with this absurd prattling in your own times. Well, Miss Brett. Oh, of course, dear lady, of course. How rude of us. I'm quite sure there's no need to detain you any longer at all. <coughs> May the esteemed gentleman please be excused, your excellency. Mm, indeed. The theft of the coat bomb was clearly perpetrated by this baby saddled sergeant. I would certainly appear to be unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. Of course it is! Hiding a coin under a lump of meat? The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. N -n nonsense is it? Uh, um, well, oof. And as for the picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife or fork, it's beyond nonsense, it's pure madness. Very well, now all the questions concerning the witness's testimony have been answered. I see no further justification for detaining her. Miss Brett, you are free to leave. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. And good day. Hey, Scoop, what's the matter with you? This is no time for daydreaming. Oh, no, it's just... Something about Miss Brett's parting words there got me thinking. I can't quite work out what exactly, but something she said jarred with me. I feel like there was a contradiction in there somewhere, something that didn't quite add up. If that's the case, don't just stand there thinking, make your voice heard. Sorry? You can think later, but if you don't call out now, it'll be too late. The trial will be over. There we go, buddy. Wait, Miss Brett! What is it now? I'm afraid, just one last time, there's something I'd like to ask you. If you'd like to explain the contradiction in your parting words just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? What contradiction? What news? What new student nonsense is this? Well, what parting words are you talking about, Ryanusku? Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. It's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Yes, I'm right. What she said there exposed an undeniable contradiction. I'm going to need you to see evidence. I'm going to need to see evidence, Council. Miss Brett's words are truly contradictory. Where is the evidence to prove it? Take that. The steak that Miss Brett had been eating before the professor was killed? Yes, go on. More accurately, Your Excellency. The steak was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed. Now you're just spitting hairs. Not true. 
Doesn't something seem about this snake strike you as un very unnatural? Unnatural? What on earth do you mean? It's extremely obvious. I'm talking about the shape of the edges where it's been eaten. <gasps> I see you've noticed it too, Miss Brett. Well, what exactly, Council? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed no English one would, could even contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. Of course she did. She's refining this gentlewoman herself. Then take a good look at the steak, in particular the edges where it's been eaten. As you can see, there are clearly defined barbaric teeth marks there. Ah! Oh! Ah! Looks like Miss Brett has realized something. So, if the witness actually claims wouldn't contemplate eating anything without using a knife and fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in that steak at all! Attention! But what is the actual point? Perhaps that the life of Miss Brett was ravenously hungry and couldn't help her- Oh, um, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, I really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. Of course, of course. This will all be over in the blink of an eye. Rest assured, I'm about to put this rookie in his place. Just leave him in the I've heard enough! You irritating little spectacle samurai relic! Oh, of course! Dear lady! What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have we ruffled your feathers? How long have you been waiting to say that, buddy? Clearly the witness knows what this means. She realized this catastrophic implication those teeth marks in the state map for her. Reno Scoop, do you know where this is going? Yes, now at last, it's all come together. This mysterious teeth marks in the steak that had allegedly been eaten with the cutlery. The reason why the blood stain I know I saw somehow seems to have disappeared. And most importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all who shot Dr. Wilson that day. Except that there, that these teeth marks in the stake are a little unnatural, as you put it, Council. But what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Everything? Yes, I believe these barbaric teeth marks in the stake here amount to the conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond a any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Conclusive evidence? How many times have I heard that today? Wouldn't you, you wouldn't know the meaning of that phrase, typical Japanese empty threats. How can you be so sure? Oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it at the court, to the court long ago. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Hasn't been? What? But just because it hasn't been shown yet, doesn't mean that the evidence does not exist. This is absurd! The trial's run several hours already, and you say there's evidence yet to be brought forward? There can't be! I don't believe you have it! Oh, I don't, but I know someone who does have it! Someone in this very courtroom! <gasps> And if that person is willing to submit that piece of evidence I'm referring to, it will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Very well. I have a feeling this will be my last request of defense in this trial. Who possesses the conclusive evidence to reveal the whole truth about this affair? Take that! Yay! That's it! The answer is obvious. It's Inspector Hosonaga! What? I... I have it? Yes. You... you think I've been withholding conclusive evidence? That's ridiculous. <laughs> no, 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 no! I'm not saying that! Everyone's attention has been focused on the stake with the teeth marks. Yes? Now, earlier in this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court the following. I enjoyed chopping my way through a good stake. And once we all admitted to stealing the Korokota Sun's coin, he told us he slipped it under the stake. You, you watch it, cadet! I was a superior officer! Sergeant Nosa, could you please confirm something for me? Was the stake you put in the coin under, in fact, your own stake? Tension! Affirmative, of course. I might be a soldier of the Imperial Nippon Army, but still. I am brave enough to not uh, to ask a foreign gentle lady if she didn't mind me hand manhandling her meal to hide something in it. In other words, the stake that the detective submitted to evidence earlier was in fact Sergeant Nose's meal. Attention! But 
makes no sense. The blade was taken from the victim's table. He said he took both, didn't he? Yet the gentlewoman doesn't take bites out of her steak, nor does she have any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course I didn't steal it. To even suggest such a thing would be an affront to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? Exactly! Surely you're not going to suggest that the sergeant switched the two sticks over. You did switch the plates. Well, after it happened, the, um... When I saw the civilian had been murdered right in front of my eyes like that, I panicked. As I said, I immediately lifted my stake and hit the coin underneath it. But then when the waiter announced that he was an undercover policeman, I thought I had it. If he decided to investigate my slab of meat, then it'd be it. I'd be getting my marching orders. So when the cadet here was arrested and taken out to the kitchen, I seized my chance. Oh my god. With military precision and timing, I switched my stake with the one on the foreign lady's table. What?! You can't have! I, I never saw you do such a thing! It's called Operation Lightning Bolts. There's no time for strategic planning. Do or die, I tell you, so yes. I did what had to be done. Un unbelievable! However, fear not, Prosecutor San. What now? I swear on the brass buttons of my uniform. That, that is all I did, sir. All you did? That's plenty, Sergeant! So, if Sergeant Nosa switched the plates over, it means that he took Miss Brett's steak and the plate was in on it on the back of his own table. Yes, that follows. Pers Inspector Hosonaga. Yes? Earlier in this trial, you told the court this. You said that you had not only taken Miss Brett's steak after the incident, but also the sergeant's. That, to preserve the evidence, you had taken both. Ah! <sighs> That's correct. Then please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually on the victim's table at the precise moment he was shot! What can you, you- what can that possibly tell us now? I mean a cold slab of tough meat? I can't have the slightest bearing on the case. No, you're not wriggling your way out of this time, lady. I beg your pardon? Surely you're not that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why the stake put Pan promised to prove such a problem for you, no? <laughs> you're the one who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defendant asked to see that stake play in the first place was to confirm something that the defendant remembers seeing. Tsk! Things he remembers! I'm quite aware of what I saw, Miss Brett. On that side of the plate that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson, after there was a clear sp there was a clear splattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. And now he has the evidence to prove it. The plate you were eating from, Miss Brett. Let's not prolong this any further. Inspector, you will show the evidence to the court. Present the beef steak and the plate who were originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident. Yes, sir! This is the best pursuit theme! Sorry for keeping you. And look at that. Here is the other stake in its plate. Please, feel free to examine it. The blood stain. It's clearly visible! Look! Yes. Now this makes everything clear! The blood you can see on the side of the plate shows that at the moment the victim was shot, he was facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it's impossible for now to hold the son to have even shot the victim. Ugh. It, it can't be! In fact, there is only one person who could possibly have shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows who by now that person is. <sighs> That's right, Miss Gisela Brett. It's you! <laughs> huh? 
Oh, done by a Japanese? Me? By a Japanese schoolboy? No, no, no! Ugh! Little chicks, they're adorable. Are you done, lady? Okay, that's a little weird. I'm gonna be honest. Rainer's gonna be like, I'm Scott. <laughs> oh, they're cute. Can we take them? <laughs> Why does he get a black one? I want to keep them. <laughs> oh, they're everywhere. <laughs> Please excuse my little outburst. I briefly lost my composure. Briefly? You have some becoming behavior for an English gentlewoman. Forgive me. Well, Miss Bretz. I think it's time you told us the core what actually happened that day. The truth this time. Gladly, Your Excellency. It was I who took the professor's life using the curare. As you are surmised, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you planned to kill the professor, knowing that no trace of poison would be found in his water. Because curare is unheard of here in Japan. Yes. Of course, I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. I only needed to see the professor take one sip of his water and that would be all over. I would be place the steak I ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone. And then I leave immediately. However... Before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Oh, he was being nice. It's a trifling matter, but the fact that you decided to come over and greet the professor... Meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. I mean, you could have walked out. In due course, the professor took a sip of the water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in this chair such that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at that point, so I concocted a plan on the spare of the moment. A plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. I happen to know that the professor always carries a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of Cura in my handbag, and my own pistol concealed under my skirt. I knew it! Under your skirt? So I was right. There was two guns. There were two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee, got up to leave. That's when you noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor. Placed where you were sure I would notice it. And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun as I intended. And then, just as you bent down to pick it up... Oh my god. That's when you shot the professor with your own gun, even though at that point, he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused a commotion, at which point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assume Mr. Naro Ondo-san was the culprit and uh, behind him. I took him to the pantry that adjoins the kitchen and locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn to the professor and his chair around. Because, of course, you needed to make it look like the defendant was the one who shot Dr. Wilson from where he picked up the gun. This is all very... an elaborate murder plot, but if you just had to make him drink it, I would have walked out after he drank it. Didn't matter if Renuska was there. Just saying, I would have won if I had to murder Dr. Wilson. So there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. I'm scarred for life. <laughs> Sorry, that was just too good. <laughs> but I would be after this. Your Excellency. Yes? I wonder. Might I speak with you in private later? Huh. I shall call on you. Thank you. Good day then, everyone. I hope you can forgive me, Naruhodo san. Again, we all heard rumors about the third game that was supposed to come with this, but I hope she- I wonder if she was going to return in the third game and possibly kill Naruto. <laughs> I'm sorry, Inuskoo, you're my favorite, I promise. 
It would seem this trial has finally run its course. I presume the prosecution's in agreement. This, this can't be, Takasuki! Out she does not lose! Not to the likes of this, this rookie student! Oh, this is my favorite part. You better go You better start getting used to tough oppositions. Uh, Rune of Skunada Hall, no! Well, yes? And this insults the Archie family name. will never be forgotten! You've become conceited with age, Council, but the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that! My dude, I love re I love them all. I do love how Ryunusuke just ran away. A thousand millennia may pass, and still the Auchi clan will never measure up to the Narahondo clan. Oh, buddy, if only you knew. This Stentario in the Supreme Court of Japan, he, well, will, I believe, go down history at the start of a new chapter of our country's judicial system. Despite that being someone as the accused, you, Ryunusuke Narahondo, present an excellent case. I thank you, Your Excellency. In the use of evidence and deductions to unravel the truth of the modern methodology, after all, it has only been a few short decades since our country opened doors to a wider world. But the Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring in new methods of investigation and new procedures of justice. A new future of law awaits, but what it will look like, I cannot begin to imagine. This is for the young to pursue. Kazuma Asugi. Yes? After, to draw, after this trial, you are set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can. Absorb everything in the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand, Your Excellency. What was that about? Why do you look so brave all of a sudden? Ah, uh, never mind. As for you, Ryusuke Narohono, Oh, yes? In you, I sense, how can I put it, an unusual potential. I much, I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that out. Thank you, Your Excellency. I'm never doing this again, though. Watch it. <laughs> it is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find the defendant, Ryusuke Narahondo. Oh, we've done it! We've done it! This video is over an hour, but we've done it! I finished the first trial before I go back to class! Yes! The court is adjourned. Ah! Unfortunately, we'll get to chapter two, which is a gosh darn shame, because it's the whole reason I bought this game. Oh, we survived. I can't believe it. Can't believe what's happened. I made it. I defended myself and made it through that horrendous trial. Ryanusuke, you finally pulled it off. Congratulations. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Kazuma. <laughs> no, no, it was a pleasure to watch you out your work. So, you owe me an extra large uh, sukiyaki from the place on Yuma University Street. Don't forget. Good afternoon. All your hard work has certainly paid off. Oh, it's her! <laughs> Congratulations to the both of you for proving Narado, Narodo son's innocence. Ah, our, our trusty judicial assistant. You worked hard for that result too, you know. Oh no, I didn't do anything. Thank you so much! Oh, that's so cute of Rinosuke. If we hadn't had that research report of Miss Breath, I don't know how things would have turned out. Your kind words should really be from my father. I was simply doing things as he asked. It was his idea for me to go to the university and investigate. Your father? Ah, yes, of course. Yeah, I thought it was him who came. Forgive me for intruding on our court proceedings, Your Excellency. Susato Mikotoba, just assistance to the defense. Speaking of Mikotoba... Ah, there you are! I believe congratulations are in order. Narahondo, you did an excellent job. <laughs> Thank you, Professor! Oh no, it was I who should be thanking you. After all, your efforts exposed the true criminal that took the life of my good friend and mentor. Good friend? Oh, yes, you mentioned that before. 
it was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yuma University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Why did you invite him and not that other person? Professor Mikotoba studied overseas himself. He went to study forensic medical med medicine in Great Britain. Presumably, that's when you met Dr. Wilson? Exactly. In those days, we worked together in the same hospital. Oh, you worked together? I've never heard you mention that before. Oh, well, it was a long time ago now. Besides, it's your turn, Sugi. <sighs> Great Britain is a magnificent country that leads the world in science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course, in law. Watch and learn, my boy! See what happens in the world's largest melting pot! I will. I'll learn it all that I can. I swear on this, the spirit of the Asugi clan! You're not taking the sword of Great Britain, are you? Of course I am! A Japanese man katana is his soul. This place shows me where I need to go. And cuts down anything that's in my way. Yes, I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. That reminds me, what happened to the woman? To Gisela, Br to Gisela Brett, I mean. After all, she's guilty of murder. Ah, yes, her. It's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? Surely she's going to face trial herself now. She's the true culprit, after all. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future for Shanghai. What? Shanghai? Oh, I, I, maybe my ancestors are there. Gisela Brett will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. What? But why not? It's a matter of counselor judici jur jurisdiction. Inspector Hosonaga! It was hard for all battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congratulate. But but what's this all about? Counselor jurisdiction! We cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. What? We can't try her? But then who? Who's going to bring her to justice? A British counselor court will hear her case somewhere far away, where our voices can't be heard. But why a counselor court? Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought the counselor courts were a thing of the past now, that we've signed the friendship treaty. Yes, in normal circumstances, you're right. Then, so as long as it's not a serious incident of a highly political nature to our representative governments, they cannot invoke a counselor court just like that! Oh, can't they? Yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our governments from making a secret agreements um, about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on! So Miss Brett can't be held accountable for actions here in Japan? That's terrible! Afraid, the, afraid that for the young student. Today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. There's no any danger of confinements for her. I don't believe it! The British government foreign affairs minister has demanded that we hand her over hand over custody of this brat. They're obviously taking this case of a foreign student committing murder very seriously. But it's all going to change from now on. We can make a change. This is a time of great turmoil. This new era heralded by the start of the 12th, uh, 20th century. One day, I have no doubt that the woman will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes. Change is coming, and we're the ones driving it. Well, I think that's enough seriousness for now. The evening calls for a celebratory drink. But Professor, I'm underage! <laughs> You're right. There's no time for gloomy faces. We should be celebrating Ryunusuke's not guilty verdict. Let's start having some fun! In that case, might I suggest the kind of... <laughs> As the head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with an ample food and drink. Um, you're not a you're a detective, Hoso Nagasan, aren't you? <coughs> oh wait, well, he's not. Let's not worry about the details for now. Jula Kanava, were you accompanying us, Professor? Of course. But Kanava's food is second to none. I shall go and attend to the paperwork for Naruto Dehan's son's release. Oh yes, thank you.
So Gisela Brett won't be tried here. I I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. No, oh, buddy. You're gonna hate that answer. Kazuma? Yes, Rinosuke? I just wanted to say thanks again. That's all. You really saved my skin today. <laughs> I didn't do a thing! You were the lawyer in there, weren't you? You, your, th That defense was all your own work. Your skills made the difference, though. One day, I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Hmm, I'm not so sure about that. Huh? To be honest, something kept occurring to me over and over again during that trial. I couldn't help thinking that maybe you're the one destined to become a great lawyer, not me. What? Come on, be serious! If I'd helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. But you have a natural talent for it. For being a defense lawyer, I mean. Oh no, not me! All that tense verbal combat? I never want to go through that again! I just... I did what you told me to do, that's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry? What do you mean, that's the point? Listen, Ryonusuku. Do you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Um, knowledge of the law? No! The ability to believe. To believe? To believe what? A defense lawyer has to fight for his clients. He has to believe them at all times. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it. Oh, okay. I'm human, just like you. I don't have any superhuman ability to know the truth. But you have, to make, you have to make the choice about what to believe in and stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can't really be, you can be really back into a corner. But being, on a, being able to remain faithful to who, what you choose to believe in, even then, well, that's not something anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. Mm, believing in your client. Just look at today's trial. I'm a student law with precious little risk, real experience. But you never stop believing in me. Well, I... You face seemingly hopeless situations time and again. But you never stop looking for the truth. And in the end, you found it. Though your own efforts. And because you never stop believing in me. Thanks, Kazuma. There's something I want to ask you, actually. Ryunusuke. Well, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. It sounds serious. What is... Ah, you're still here, are you? Oh, Inspector Hosonada. I've arranged some rickshaws for us. Let's go. Thank you. We'll be right there. Let's pick this conversation up again later. We should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory. And your study tour to Great Britain. Don't forget! Ah, yes, that too. So my first trial came to an end. Kazuma. Professor Mikotoba. Susato-san, who acted as my assistant. Wow! Just dis Kazuma right there. Specter Hosonaga, who didn't really play much of a part. But still, wow, rude. It was because of the help and the support of all these people that I managed to get through that trial. But more importantly, Kazuma hadn't yet managed to ask his favorites of me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. Woohoo! That's it! Oh, I'm so happy I got this done before I go back to class. And I'm really sorry I won't be able to play more of this. But... What's gonna happen is, I'm gonna finish Dual Destinies before we continue this. Because I plan to play this game for as long as I can on the channel. And Dual Destinies is almost done. We've got the final trial, and then the DLC, and then we're done. So I'm just gonna focus on that before we continue this. So, thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and have a wonderful day. Bye, everyone!